hello there. Now that you have generated frozen embryos with us, you are ready for the final step of the process, getting pregnant. This involves the frozen embryo transfer, or FET. Please keep in mind that everyone's process is a little bit different. This is just a general overview, so please be sure to be in touch with your primary team for the finer details of your specific treatment. There are different types of FET protocols, and your doctor will determine which is the appropriate protocol for you based on your menstrual cycle and other factors. Before you get started, there are three components that should be completed. Please make sure to have completed your prerequisite fertility evaluation. This includes blood tests and a uterine cavity evaluation, which is typically a salient sonogram, also called SHG, or a hysteroscopy. We want to make sure that when you're ready to get pregnant, you have the best possible chance for success. Number two. Please make sure to be in touch with your financial coordinator to obtain financial clearance for the cycle. If you are planning to use insurance to cover the cycle, please keep in mind that insurance companies will take approximately two to three weeks to approve authorizations. If you are planning to pay out of pocket yourself to cover the cost of your treatment, please be sure to remit payment around two weeks before your expected treatment cycle start date. We cannot get started with the treatment cycle until you are financially cleared for the cycle. Once you are financially cleared, your medication coordinator will reach out to you to pre-order the medicines that you will need for the FET cycle. Once you've heard from your medication coordinator that the medicines have been ordered, please be sure to be in contact with your pharmacy to either pick up or have the medications delivered to your home. No need to take any medications without instructions from your nurse we do want you to have the medicines at home in advance of your expected treatment cycle start date. Number three, please be sure to sign your consent forms. Your care coordinator will reach out to you via email to provide you with these forms to review, sign, and email back to us. If you have a partner involved in the process, they will also need to sign the consent forms. Now that you have all three components completed, you are ready to start the FET cycle. There are two types of FET cycles that your doctor may recommend for you, the medicated or the natural FET. Medicated FET, this is our standard approach and the FET usually begins on cycle day two or three of your period. Or if we were using birth control pills to help with timing, you would come in for ultrasound and blood work a few days after stopping the birth control pill. Preferably, we want to ensure that you have financial clearance for the cycle, medicines at home, and results of your PGT, or pre-implantation genetic testing, before getting started. You would notify us on day one of your period to be scheduled for that cycle day two or three ultrasound and blood work appointment. If all looks normal and baseline at this appointment, you will be given instructions to get started with the estrace, also called estradiol medicine. It will be one two milligram pill taken by mouth that very evening and continuing twice a day, morning and evening, moving forward. Then you typically return to us a week later for another ultrasound and blood work appointment. Sometimes we need to increase that estrace to be three times a day or vaginally if the uterine lining isn't looking as thick as the doctor would like. We sometimes switch the estrace to be administered vaginally to help thicken that uterine lining as some women absorb it better and have fewer side effects. We then check again with another ultrasound and blood work appointment four to five days later and if everything looks good, the uterine lining thickness and pattern also looks good, we are ready to get started with the progesterone. The progesterone is typically done as an intramuscular injection and you start with 0.5 mLs injected in the morning, followed by a 1 mL evening dose that same day. Then after that, the progesterone will be injected 1 milliliter intramuscularly every 24 hours. Sometimes we use a combination of progesterone and oil injections in addition to vaginal progesterone taken three times a day throughout. 
Recent studies suggest that in a medicated FET cycle where all of the hormones are from medication, the risk of miscarriage is lower when using progesterone and oil injections than with vaginal progesterone suppositories alone. The embryo is thawed in the morning on the day of your actual transfer. You will receive instructions for arrival time the day before. We will also check a progesterone level, so you'll be asked to come for a blood work only appointment one to three days before your transfer, so we can ensure the progesterone level is adequate and adjust your progesterone medication dosing if needed. The transfer is a minor procedure performed without anesthesia. The bladder should be full as a transabdominal ultrasound will be used to help guide the catheter to place the embryo in the correct spot inside of the uterus. You can bring one support person in with you for the procedure on the day of the transfer. The estrace pills and progesterone injections will continue after the transfer until your first blood pregnancy test, roughly nine to 12 days later. At this first blood pregnancy test, approximately nine to 12 days later, we expect to see the blood pregnancy level be about 50 or greater, but we have seen healthy pregnancies result from even lower levels. You'll need to continue all medications if the level is positive. If the result is negative, you'll plan to stop all of the medications, and this will cause a period to start within the next two to three days. We'll be in touch with you to plan for next steps in your process. If the result is positive, at this point, you're about four weeks pregnant, and we'll perform about two to three more HCG level checks to ensure the levels are rising appropriately. The first pregnancy ultrasound is usually scheduled to be once you are at six weeks of pregnancy, and this will help us confirm the pregnancy's location inside of the uterus. This first pregnancy ultrasound may be scheduled with a sonographer. However, in subsequent appointments can be scheduled with a physician. We typically perform three pregnancy ultrasounds at our office. If all looks good, you'll be released to your OBGYN once you are at nine weeks of pregnancy. You'll need to continue your medications until you are at 10 weeks of pregnancy. You can travel between visits as well since your visits will be planned well in advance. The estrace typically prevents ovulation by suppressing the ovaries from recruiting a follicle, but occasionally a follicle breaks through and starts to grow. So this is why we monitor your ovaries and follicles during the treatment cycle. If a follicle starts to grow and it is before ovulation, we can always adjust your transfer date and move it up as long as progesterone hasn't started to rise. The disadvantage of the medicated FUT cycle is that some women have trouble with the progesterone injections. Number two, natural FUT. This is a less commonly used, but equally as effective approach if timed correctly. The cycle starts on your cycle day two to five, but we do not prescribe any medication initially. We let the body recruit a follicle to produce estrogen and help thicken the uterine lining. Once the follicle is close to ovulation, we typically prescribe Ovidrel. It's taken as an injection to ensure ovulation and to ensure the corpus luteum continues hormone production. We also prescribe vaginal progesterone to be taken twice a day and continued in early pregnancy. Once the timing for ovulation is confirmed, the transfer will be scheduled approximately five days later. The transfer process and early pregnancy monitoring is exactly like that mentioned in the medicated FET. The advantage of this approach is that it requires less medication and does not require injectable progesterone. The disadvantages of this type of cycle are that it is less predictable and sometimes you need to come in several times throughout the cycle to time ovulation. Also, the transfer may fall on a day that is not convenient for you or on a day that your primary physician will not be available to perform your transfer. However, another excellent physician will always be available to perform your procedure. If we miss ovulation, your cycle will need to be canceled. Unlike the medicated FET, we cannot just push off your transfer 
can give you more days on the asterisk medicine if your lining isn't looking ideal. Also, since you will be ovulating, you will need to use backup contraception to avoid the risk of multiple pregnancy. I hope this overview was helpful and gives you a sense of what to expect. Your team here at CUFC is here for you every step of the way, so please call or email us if you have any questions. Best of luck!